science is actually Hi, this is Debbie Dashinger, and this is Dare to Dream podcast. And I'm always grateful for those of you who have been following me low these 11 plus years. What a what a journey this has been! And once again, I love to say we're living in interesting times. I once did a a healing workshop, and it was pretty profound. And I went every single year, and every single year, the man who created it would stand at the front of the stage in front of 5,000 of us and say. We're really living in interesting times. And every year he said that, it was incredibly accurate. And here we are, decade plus later, it's still the truth, right? Really interesting times. So I'm gonna be having a guest come on a little later. Sean Stone is here, very excited to have him. And I wanna just tell you right up in front, this show is sponsored by our friends at Thinkific. So if you have, things that you're putting out in the world, you totally want to know about them. Thinkific is actually a software platform and it enables entrepreneurs to create, market, sell, and deliver their own online courses. And they revolutionize the way people learn and earn online by giving you the tools you need to turn your expertise into a sustainable business. So here's what's great. I needed a platform. I needed to switch my stuff from where it was. This place came so highly recommended, and I have to tell you, the customer service that I've received is par none, and the ease and the beauty of these sites, it really is the biggest thing right now. So if you are interested, I'm going to offer you a discount price just for being a listener to the show. You have to use this URL to get in there, and I can post it later. It's THNK for Thinkific, THNK.cc slash Deb. Ta-da. So you will get a discount there, and it is your all-in-one platform at Thinkific to help you easily create, market, and sell your own online courses. And you want to do that URL, thnk.cc slash Deb. They're going to give you, 30, I think it's 30 days free or something. Go there. It's crazy. And their lifetime support is priceless. You'll be happy you did. So I am a media visibility strategist. That's what I do out in the world. And I help people who want to create a fierce and a unique presence through coaching to help you write your book, taking your book to a guaranteed international bestseller, and getting you scheduled on media interviews. I'm a certified coach, and I help my clients stop living in the shadows. So instead, they stand out and fulfill their purpose. This show is in its 11th year. It's syndicated. And I am the author of three international bestsellers. I've contributed to 13 anthologies, and I've been interviewed myself in over 900 media outlets. If you are wondering where you're at in the world, what's working, what's not working, and how you can start to use media visibility, you can sign up for your own visibility strategy session. They're really profound, 45 minutes. Just send an email to dare to dream radio at gmail.com, dare to dream radio at gmail.com. And when you schedule your session, what's awesome is you stop your business from living under a rock and instead you rock your business with visibility out through media and become the powerhouse leader you are meant to be. So yes, we've got Sean, Sean Stone here. He is the son of his father, Oliver Stone, and he's been in his films and many others since childhood. He co-hosted the third season of the popular TV series Conspiracy Theory with Jesse Ventura, and he hosts the online program Buzzsaw on Gaia TV. And uh, right before we bring him on, just a, a little bit of conversation about transformation and awareness. And of course, that's been coming up for me so much today, transformation and awareness. I mean, I think the idea of mindfulness, I I was in a yoga slash Pilates class this morning and she even brought it up and said, you know, mindfulness is really just awareness. And I love that. I would add to that, that it's also presence, right? Because we can be aware of maybe somewhere else, but we're, when we are entirely in the here and now, we are seeing what is, feeling what is, maybe even experiencing the possibilities, but all is well, really, when you're in the moment. So 
let's all go for transformation awareness and mindfulness. And it really is a key. Powerful transformation is self-awareness. It's about changing those things we don't prefer in our lives. And it's about breaking out of the patterns of denial, of avoidance. And we can choose. I think it's actually a profound time to choose to access a deeper level of ourself. And that does not mean using mental analysis or willpower. It's something much greater and deeper. And usually it's our soul's DNA calling to us. And of course, for those of you who enjoy meditation, that's powerful. You can quiet your mind. It's an awesome modality to use because in meditation, we actually experience pure awareness, core consciousness, and that is unbounded. It flows. It has no resistance. And when we consciously contact this baseline state of being, we engage the inner forces of transformation, and that releases us from the habits and conditioning that have been holding us back from the change that we seek. So I offer you this thought today. Use it whenever it comes up for you. What I am aware of, I can change. And my quote for you is, self-awareness doesn't stop you from making mistakes. It allows you to learn from them. So next up is Sean Stone. He's a filmmaker, conspiracy realist, light warrior, author, actor, and media host. And uh, I love this. He majored in American history, studying at Oxford and Princeton University. And he graduated. He grew up in the film world. I uh, was acting in many films before he started stepping into them in his own right. And he's appeared as a commentator on The O'Reilly Factor, Piers Morgan Tonight, Follow the Money on Fox Business News, Freedom Watch, CNN, RT, and Press TV. And again, he currently hosts the online show, Buzzsaw. Sean, welcome to Dare to Dream. It's so amazing to have you here. Oh, I appreciate it so much. Thank you for having me, Deb. This is great. Um, I think you have God shining through <laughs> right now on you. The lighting, I don't know if you ordered that lighting specifically and we're having a <laughs> Jesus moment, but, it, but it's really working for you. <laughs> uh, it's a beautiful light, isn't it? Well, it's a little, a little later here in Texas than where you are. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Texas. Very nice. That's actually one of my positive lines in my astro cartography, so good to know. And um, I want to start with, like, I guess I want to start with who you are right now and where you're operating from. What motivates you? What got you onto the path you're on right now? And if you can tell people a little bit about who you are in case they don't know yet. Well, you have certainly laid out the, uh, the basic blueprints, right? I mean, the irony, of course, is are we made by our genetics or... Um, you know, is that just sort of the basic blueprint of expression? And then really it's, you know, the argument is that we are actually shape our DNA and our, our brain as we make choices in life and as we, uh, we do actions. So basically it's like you start with a certain blueprint and certain genetic in orientation. In my case, that was probably uh, more inclined towards outside the box thinking, right? Uh, <laughs> real awareness, awareness of power being, uh, you know, in the hands of people behind the scenes that are not, is, uh, you know, in the film Nixon, I'd put it like the beast, right? It's like, where is the power? It's not in the hands of the president. There's something bigger at work here. And then, you know, from being a young kid at the time and, you know, my teens, I was very interested by the CIA and black ops and basically this notion of, wow, you start to dig into the history and it's not G.I. Joe and it's not, you know, America being the good guys since World War II, but really America using a lot of uh, dirty techniques to manipulate foreign countries, overthrow democratic leaders, um, just Vietnam is, and Vietnam War probably was the greatest expression of that, of an outgrowth of the dark black operation, a CIA operation that expanded to ultimately cost millions of lives. But uh, that interest ultimately led me to bigger metaphysical questions about, uh, well, you know, power in the physical form is certainly malleable and it's uh, mysterious but aren't there things behind the scenes that are even more mysterious about the essence of who we are as human beings and how we came here and you know we're only here on earth for less than 100 years but how many millions of years of, of uh, evolution it take to create us isn't there perhaps a consciousness behind that evolution which i believe is this what people call god consciousness love there's some force that's that's driving all of this and to me, this is where 
I think I've come into who I am and what I'm about is seeking greater truths, higher truths, deeper truths that, um, you know, ultimately I've sourced a lot of people in the course of my time. You mentioned Buzzsaw is one of the shows I've done. I've loved interviewing people and telling stories through documentary formats. Uh, but ultimately it's a question of sort of sifting through these different realities to come to a place now where I would say, I'm tired of all the, the talk. I'm tired of all the, the, the hall of mirrors that they've put us through. Uh, if you look around the society, the world, we're in a place where there's so much polarization and division, uh, you know, hate Trump, love Trump, you know, pro-Democrat, pro-Republican, uh, pro-Russia, anti-Russia. I mean, it's like, it's, it's become comical in a sense to me. It's really farcical to, to get into that uh, dialogue because fundamentally we're looking at a divergence point in human consciousness. It's almost schizophrenia, but then that's usually what happens before you reach a new level of consciousness. And you have to let go of that partisanship in a sense within to recognize that there is only holism. There's only one, there's only unity fundamentally. And in order to get there, it's a leap, but you really have to release yourself from these, um, dialectics essentially because the dialectics have been important and they've played their role but ultimately they, they have put us into this into this trap and i feel like the next evolution is getting beyond the level of dialectic to just the question just the sensation the consciousness of being and experiencing and coming in a more empathic not so much based in knowledge of facts and information because certainly there's there's infinite amount of information out there but what does it really give you that's not what wisdom, wisdom has never been described as knowing more information. Wisdom is being able to synthesize that information and apply it in a way that actually makes your life better and other people's lives better. So, you know, to me, it's like we're at that point now where we have to go beyond the place of just awareness where, you know, we have access to infinite amount of information through the internet, thankfully, and, and news sources and different perspectives, but coming to a place of, synthesizing that into a wholeness and a, whole, a, a holistic approach to being and basically realizing, well, what really matters? Not those details, not the anger, not the, the hatred, not the frustration, but the love that really is the sort the, the, the place that we all are coming from as humans, as, as birth, we're birthed in the process of love and expression of, of life being an expression of love. And that's where we have to come back to in that sense of we want to, we want to serve life. We want to serve uh, the progress of, of, of human life going forth, not the destruction that comes from, again, these psychological tensions of, of anger and frustration and hate and fighting and, and whatnot. Wonderful. And if these really are times where what the polarization that's happening is actually showing the underbelly, that needs to be looked at, healed, dealt with. And if love truly is possible, and I do believe in abundance and, and that everything can be chosen and created. So if that's true, what do you see right now is possible? I know you have an incredibly curious mind. I know you're very well read and you're up on a lot of what's going on in the world. And I know that you often engage in a lot of really high level conversations with people in the know. So taking all of that into the account and just what your inside resonates with, what is possible? What kind of choices need to be made and what kind of outcomes could occur? Mm -hmm. You know, the when you say possible, you know, the universe is infinite. The nature of, uh, I did a documentary called Century of War, where we tried to focus on the fact that, and this is very important people don't realize, we have infinite resources. We have to come from this, we have to flip the modality that's been put in place for so long because our economic system is driven by a centralization of money in the first place, right? So they print, the Federal Reserve prints money at interest, at a premium, right? And it issues a limited amount of, of supply into circulation. So we have this idea of fixed amount of wealth. It can, you know, if one person gains, another person has to lose. And that's not actually the nature of the universe. The nature of our universe is one of, of, of creating resources. We created money in the first place. We invented it. We, you know, if, if oil is a resource, it's only because of our creations that 
you know, for the combustible engines that require oil, that's a creation of man. If we wanted to shift, and for example, I drive a hydrogen car, you know, we could very quickly shift to a hydrogen-based car fueling system, a water-based fueling system, obviously electricity, um, you name it. Electricity still obviously runs on a power grid. But the point is that everything that we're deploying as far as resources is, is initiated by the creativity of man. So when we come from that place of abundance, the idea that there is enough that we can provide for all, you already start to shift away from the fear, the despair modalities that usually collapse societies. Civilization, civilizations collapse because people get into a despair mode and all of a sudden you have a constriction of you know, fear puts us into constricted states. We're not as creative, we're not as uh, visionary and we begin to fight, tensions increase. So there has to be a certain level of, of tension to create, 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 to create from. You have to have a little tension to create, but too much tension creates will, will lead to a collapse. And I think that's the modality that we've been put into is scarcity. Whereas you see now the notion of these cryptocurrencies, the blockchain, the transparency. Cryptocurrencies are really important because it basically allows us to realize we can create wealth based on the fact of valuing us as human beings as being the generators of that wealth. We can generate an, an app. I mean, what is an app? What is a Facebook? What is an Instagram? It has no inherent value. Its value is the usership. If millions of people use it, then that's the value. But actually, the people using it are the value. So why is it that we don't value them? Why do we value the company and we don't value the users? It's only just shifts in thinking. That's what Matt, and that's where we're going now is to this beautiful place of shifting the thinking from scarcity to abundance and recognizing, wow, actually there is enough, you know, look at nature, how much land is, you know, is, is, is available to us, but it has to be used properly. You have to you deploy the proper mentality to uh, not exploiting it, but to working with nature and working with your environment as opposed to just, you know, basically the old modality of just, you know, uh, what's it called, you know, slash and burn, just tear it up, you know, you exploit it as much as you can and walk away from it. No, it's, it needs to be cultivated and worked with. And then we can holistically, you know, live with nature. I mean, we are natural expressions. We are humans, you know, this notion of humans being parasites. Again, it's, it's negative because we're not some anomaly. We are a coherent expression of, of, of nature. We have, you know, we, we are not, or nature the thing synthetic in fact in truth because it's all made from nature but the question is how do you recycle it if you can recycle it back into nature then you're working in tandem with nature if you're not if you're just dumping plastic into the ocean this is you know the most absurd logic of all because you're not providing yourself or your you know your your future you know lineage your children grandchildren you know, and, and the, uh, obviously the animals that live in these habitats continue to thrive in the future. So it's not to say that these aren't natural. Plastic ultimately will degrade. But you're talking about how many thousands of years to get there. It's just, it's an absurdist logic. So we have to be more rational in terms of our approach and recognizing that, yes, everything is, is, is natural, but we have to maintain that symbiosis. And in, and in the meantime, you're going to see expressions of chaos and, you know, Mother Nature reacting or you know, whether or not some of these incidences are prompted by directed energy weapon or by or chemical engineering, it's, you know, there's certainly some truth to that geoengineering, but still it's, there's an expression of, look, we have to recognize that we are in working in conjunction with these natural habitats. Let's use our minds and our, our reason to help that expression and not hinder our own future as a species. Well, you're listening to Dare to Dream podcast. You can go to debbiedashinger.com for your free report on publicity, and you can download how to become the go-to expert, and you can be interviewed on media. It's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com, and just get your free report there. And I am interviewing Sean Stone. I think it's best to find him in Insta. So go there to Instagram, the real Seanstone.com. I understand once upon a time that you explored haunted mental asylums. Is that true? Thoroughly. Thoroughly. Oh my God. Were you not afraid? <laughs> That was the, the thesis of my first film was, you know, what is fear but a manifestation of the mind? Yeah, we made a film called Greystone Park. 
and that was based on these explorations. And really the, the, you know, the point that I came to, the conclusion I came to was, yes, those things are real, they exist, but they also are fundamentally expressions of our own fears and our own wavelength. So the more you, reson the more you resonate at the wavelength of fear, paranoia, uh, anger, aggression, it will basically, that vibration creates, you know, creates waves, right? everything is energetic so you had a vibration that creates wavelengths it, it it obviously brings other thing other entities to you at the same wavelength right um you know that was a certain period of my life that was extremely dark and then there, and then i kind of came out of that into a limbo phase where it was like you know you go to limbo next <laughs> bringing it to paradise right so the limbo phase was coming to realize okay i have faith in a higher power you know, that you can call it God, you know, Muslims call it Allah, Jehovah. I mean, you name it. It's just a question of what you believe that power to be. In my case, I believe it's, it's a universal consciousness source creator that has no sexual identity, that has no, you know, one face. That it's just, it's infinite. And, it, you know, that's the nature of, of, again, the universe, I say, you know, infinite. It expresses itself in us. And imagine how deep and profound we are and then you know the universe is even more profound and creative but you know, just think about how beautiful this universe is you look at how cells metastasize how a sperm and an egg you know are lit these you know these these material substances that seem dead that don't see, you know they just they don't seem to have any life but you merge them together and all of a sudden uh, and a zygote is, is created and, you know, these cells start to know how to metastasize and they know how to, you know, multiply and from cells come more cells. And that's what we're, we're made of all these cells. But, you know, it's like this beautiful mystery that we have to honor. There has to be, there is something conscious that's creating all of this because we are conscious and we are not the highest level of expression of consciousness. So who knows where we're going? I, I think, you know, the exciting you say, let us live in interesting times or we're living in interesting times and it's going to get more interesting now because we are beginning to be a conscious of evolution and the process that we're going through to become metahuman. So basically it's challenging what it is to be human in the first place, but then as we're not even sure who what a human is in the first place, we're now about to enter a phase of going beyond what human is because we're going to be able to, you know, basically mess with stem cells and, Ultra genetics. We're going to be able to, to you know, merge with machines and, and better understand thoughts and, and expressions of thought on chips. And you know, basically, you're just going to see this next not century, but the next thousand years. I think you're going to take us to a whole new dimension of reality because that's where I think the most exciting promise. It's not five. It's not three D reality. It's actually five D and beyond. It's a multi dimensional reality that I learned through the the spiritual exercises of going into haunted places and realizing they're, we're in a multidimensional reality. There are other beings that are here. We can't necessarily see them, but they exist. And as we go beyond our current understanding, we're going to start to interact with these other dimensions of reality. And we're going to start to have more interaction with the alien, you know, alien entities that are exist here, whether they're from different star systems or they've been on earth longer than we have. And, you know, the fairies, pearls, and other species of old, or whether they're inside the earth, the inner earth theories, all these things are true because everything you can imagine is true because the universe is so much more multidimensional in its, inf in its infinitude than any of us have even dared to acknowledge. Hmm. I read that you wanted more than anything to be able to go into the earth that was something if you could have you would do and yeah. i'm wondering with everything you just said coupled with that i've read that in mount shasta living deep underneath are the telos i've read several books about that and i became really obsessed so i don't know why it ignited in me this must go to mount shasta must have some kind of experience there and I'm wonder what, wondering what you know about that or what your thoughts are. Yeah, much asked because um, it's part of the leftovers from the Lemurian civilization, as I understand it, right? Right, Lemurian, yeah. Like the Western version of Atlantis, and more holistic, apparently. The Atlanteans got caught up with their technology. 
and ultimately sunk themselves. Mm -hmm. But which we made, you know, which was one possibility for us when they created America as the new Atlantis intentionally. But uh, the Lemurian uh, presence in Mount Shasta, I mean, I've been told by a few friends that I would say are, you know, reliable to a, you know, to the extent that they told me that they had encounters with inner earth people beings. Mm. And that the question becomes with the inner earth is how multidimensional. I don't think they're just physically 3D beings. We're talking about um, more like 5D beings that are uh, within the earth. The fascinating thing for me is like, you know, I'd love to go inside and, and just experience what it is because you see what we have this issue on 3D reality, boredom. Right? I mean, this is fundamentally what drives man is like this desire to, to do something. We have to create, we have to, uh, you know, procreate, we have to, uh, you know, entertain ourselves. So, you know, again, these stories about inner earth and you said about, well, what are you going to do? You, you say to yourself, what are you doing in inner earth all day? You know, you're not playing uh, table tennis <laughs> <laughs> for years and years. So what do you do inside the inner earth? And then you start to realize, well, First of all, our sense, our sense of time is very different than if you were on a, if you were an animal, for example, as they say, dogs, you know, age seven years, seven human years for every year, right? So mm -hmm. Their sense of time is, is different from ours. And you name it, you know, go down to a fly, to a, you know, a microchip level, the processing speed of a microchip is certainly different. So what is the consciousness of time for an inner earth being in 5D? Maybe their sense of time is like one of their days is like a thousand of, or 10,000 of our years, who knows? Mm -hmm. And plus you get into this notion of, well, you've ever done LSD or I've done ayahuasca and mushrooms and you know, what is your sense of time on those drugs? Mind altering, right? So your conception, your consciousness is shifted and you, you're basically in this state of journeying. It's like dream time, actually. Dreams are very similar in that sense. I, you know, my, my dreams last night, I remember I had, a dozen dreams and it was just like back back and me on a brain scan it was only 30 seconds of human time 30 seconds of human time could be what felt like days in dream time so if maybe they're in a dream state what we would consider a dream state of consciousness very fluid and maybe that's what they're doing they're just they're just yearning maybe they're having the best trips of all in 5d and they're watching movies that are like blow any of our sci-fi movies out of the water. I just have to make a bid. If you make this happen, if you somehow go into the earth, please take me. <laughs> I would love to go. I don't care if we bring cameras and we do a documentary I, or we just go explore and come back out and share it if we come back out. But I, I just have this incredible fascination and I think um, those things that ignite us there's a reason for it there's a strong connection that creates that kind of desire to experience so I love that and I I would like to ask you when you reference that you have really reliable friends who have spoken directly to the idea of the telos and that they had connection can I ask you how did that manifest just like they um they saw them like they would be hiking and they would just see these beings that were like they were luminescent i would suppose you'd say they seemed more light and they would just sort of like wave to them or telepathically communicate mm. it's it's a strange thing i don't know that i've experienced beings i mean I, I i would say look i know some people and some of us i would say are not from this world you know you just have that feeling like you know we come from a different place and we just know it in our souls but physically we look human I've never had an experience with a being that didn't look human. So I can't imagine what that is, you know, as a state of, of mind that you shift, you know, it's, do you shift states? Does, does this person really glow more? Does, you know, do they look all of a sudden you see what looks like a gray alien? I don't, I don't know how that works, but um, I believe it's, uh, you know, again, anything you can imagine can exist in reality just because every, all of our reality is from a perspective of our, of our eyes, right? We're just seeing, things through our, 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 you know, our neurons are receiving transmissions and our eyes are basically, you know, giving our brain, you know, certain information and our brain is giving us a perception and, uh, and we think that's reality. It's a very funny notion because even our instruments can only detect so much. We can't detect what dark matter is. 
we just say, well, there's something massive that's moving through space right now. Actually, there's a galactic storm heading our way. Apparently, there's a cluster of this uh, dark matter heading towards us at 300 miles per second. And uh, it's coming towards Earth. But obviously, we can't see it. But they say it'll be a good opportunity for scientists to measure dark matter. So again, what is dark matter? It's probably something multidimensional. And maybe your psychic awareness will pick it up. And maybe it's some expression of angelic, maybe the angelic uh, or the extraterrestrials communicating with us through that dark matter, because that's really just saying from a different dimension of reality. Maybe it'll give us a new awakening. I hope that'll shift our consciousness. I'm so curious. What was it like for you growing up? What were the conversations like around the dinner table with your dad, Oliver, your mom, and your siblings? Well, I'll tell you one thing. It wasn't like this. You know, none of this conversation comes from that. Um, you know, I wouldn't talk to my father about these kind of things. He's, uh, he's very engaged in the political spectrum. We talked a lot more on the uh, history. He loves history. A lot of the Untold History of the United States documentary series that he made for um, Showtime and now it's on Netflix. Um, I actually worked with him for uh, about a year editing and I put some of my my history major because I studied history at college. So I used some of that in helping him um, with some of the ideas there. But certainly his interest was mu is much more grounded in mm -hmm. political power, you know, Putin, you know, Putin interviews, things like this. Mm -hmm. And I am more interested by intergalactic power and what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> and for you uh, throughout your life and to now, Sean, what is what is the thing that has taken you the longest to learn that has made a really important difference in your life, but it really took you a minute to I understand and ingest and employ in your life? Hmm. <sighs> so many lessons. I mean, I'm still learning, but what could I say? I would say, you know, I think the power of nature power of simplifying can't be understated. You cannot say enough how important it is that we connect, you know, with our environment, that we simplify ourselves, that we cut out all the illusions and distractions that take us away from our being and our, and our reality, essentially. Because most of our life is distraction. Most of our life is spent being told what you're supposed to do based on societal norms, societal conditioning, program, programs about success, wealth, fame, um, stardom. Uh, you know, the stars are up there in the sky. They're not here on earth. Yes, there are some people that have genuine light inside of them, but just because they're famous doesn't mean they actually have that light. There's this mis you know, misunderstanding that, well, what is wealth if you don't enjoy your life? What is wealth if you've destroyed the entire, you know, the entire environment to acquire things that are not even, you know, obviously not, you know, they're not going to outlast your lifetime. And, uh, and you hate your family or you hate your friends and, you know, where's your wealth then? Uh, health is the most, you know, most important thing of all. The body is the temple for, you know, they say for a reason because this is your vehicle. This is your instrument, whether or not, and I'm a spiritual person, but you can't be spiritual if you're not in physical form. You'll just be a pure spirit, and then who knows where you'll be. But you have to have that physical form to actually have the channels open, you know, to receive the delights of the world and the inspirations and the beauty. Because we're here for a reason. We're here to, you know, obviously we're here to enjoy this beautiful earth experience. And so I think maybe that's maybe the most important lesson of all is just be in joy. Why, why should we put ourselves into these programs of despair and, and anger and frustration when it's like, so many times people argue, you know, I talked earlier about, you know, the, the, the psychological dissonance where it's like, people are so angry at Trump or, you know, Russia or something outside that has nothing to do with their lives, <laughs> right? It's like, we get more and more into the psychological dissonance where we put more and more projection and anger and, 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 and blame 
onto things that are so far from us. Whereas, you know, as opposed to just addressing the things in our life that we can actually affect, that are actually, we can deal with on a daily basis, you know, when you make decisions and you, you apply them and you, you, know, you work through your situation. But how often are people just caught up in like, you know, the, the, the issue of blaming and hating others and not realizing it doesn't even affect them. It doesn't affect their state of being. It doesn't affect their peace. They'll be, they would achieve a lot more by being in their peace and their purpose and walking their path and, you know, achieving on a daily basis what you can than going out there and raging and railing about something you can affect. You know, this is actually so huge. And uh, I feel like I've come really far with this, which is so good, right? It, there's a lot of detachment. But I, I actually went through something this morning that brought this back up, where I have to re-remember, where I had a whole thing, craziness with UPS and not leaving packages and taking them to another facility and driving to the facility and it's not there. And you get them on the phone and like zero customer service. And I really felt my stuff rising. Like, mm -hmm. you know, the lion wanted to come out and roar and I was so frustrated. So uh, it was, I actually had to almost intercept myself and be mindful and say, cool, express yourself. That's really important and get across what you need, see what they can do and find a common ground, a win-win. At the same time, I have to remind myself life is but a dream. You know, it's all the creation. So it's like, what do you want to create here? Uh, let's give everybody some slack, back away, and just bring to you what you need. And and if it doesn't come, find another avenue. But like, not to make everything so significant and important and lose brain cells on it all. So yeah, I have to also, as much as I, I've come so far in my detachment. I also have to remember sometimes when things come up in the moment, oh, okay, that's right. That's what this really is. It's really not real. It's, it's, what is the permanence? The permanence is how it marks you in terms of your, your reaction. So if something really bothers you, it's going to leave a reaction in your body, in your genetics. Like, you know, they've done studies now showing that like memories are transmit, you know, basically uh, like they've done studies with rats, for example, how, you know, memories are stored from generation to generation right so imagine if we're storing memories in our dna and our cell structure and that's then obviously like that's why certain things are so like ingrained in us but also sometimes we're just working through things we don't even understand why do i have an inclination in the first place well it, your dna was marked by your ancestors and this whole genetic memory concept so you know, what, what you react to is going to affect your body. It's going to come into your being. Um, it'll create stresses. It'll create imbalances. And I guess the key is just, we're going through the same patterns of experiences, right? And it's kind of figuring out, okay, at what point are you able to breathe through it and stay calm and not, you know, go into stress mode, not collapse so that, you know, it's like passing the test, basically. At what point do you pass the test? Because you're you give me, you'll be giving that test over and over and over and over until you pass it. Yeah. Oh, my God. It, this it. whole lineage thing is, is really big. I actually, I find it fascinating. I've engaged in a lot of lineage healing. My father is a Holocaust survivor, and there's something called second generation issues, PTSD, and all. There, there's things I was aware of growing up I knew inherently did not belong to me, didn't make sense because I was such a joyous creature, and yet there were other influences that came in that were very interesting. So I have engaged in a lot of healing sessions around that. You know, I figured just the Jews alone, <laughs> what they've been through running from country to country, and the crazy persecution, and, and the whole idea about you can be successful for a period of time until we deem that it's not cool anymore and we're going to go after you and take everything from you. So there's like a lot of stuff around that. And I, I do find that very interesting that we can find ways to shed ourselves so that we can end that here. End that here. End it. End it. It, 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 it. You keep being the test over and over until you pass it. And then after you pass it, it's not a test anymore. 
<laughs> That's really true, by the way. That is really true. You know, I have experienced and seen this in other people's lives. They can go through something really big, a really big shift. Maybe it's a breakup, you know, and, and they're leaving something behind and saying, I don't think I'm going to do that again. I think I'm going to do something different. And I think the test is that the same thing tends to come up until the universe or we're really clear. No, we're not going there again. We're really going down this path instead. Mm -hmm. So I've seen that as well. And I think it's really interesting that it, almost helps to solidify within us that the healing can be done here and finished and complete so we can move on somewhere else. Yes. And, you know, it won't, I don't know if it'll be done for everybody. I don't know if some of us will enter 5D reality and others will take their time in 3D. I don't know how it's going to look. You know, it's going to be an interesting place this century. It's already getting more interesting. You know, since the beginning of the century was very dark. And I kind of find it more comical than, than dark at this point. And it's so interesting because I've had people come on the show talking about the 5D and the up leveling and that, you know, if we're feeling these interesting machinations within us or a little unlike ourselves and things are happening, that it's often because the energy is being upgraded within us. What is your take on that? Do you sense that it is happening for all of us and some of us are just way better than others? or it's happening for some and not others the new chosen ones mm -hmm. no you know in the reality itself is changing and i think there's just a choice point essentially it's like i almost don't want to give away too much i'm being guided not to give away too much it's like mm. you can't give away the punchline yet <laughs> Let's just go through the process. Okay. Really go through the process and feel and enjoy and um, learn and deepen into themselves. That's really what this journey is about. It's going deeper and deeper into you. And that you is, is, is infinite. It has many lives. It has many soul lifetimes of memories to, to, to remember, to go through. And that's why, you know, you're, you're drawn to certain stories and you're like, ask yourself, why do I love, you know, you know this story about this type of hero or you know king arthur or you know egypt or whatever it is and go into it whatever it is that you really love that's like draws you go into those and see what you dig out of it see what memories come up with it mm. you know really enjoy this time this is going to be a lot of fun actually that's so cool i like it i resonate with that a lot I do think we're led to the pieces we're supposed to be. Well, you can subscribe to Dare to Dream. Leave us a five-star review. It actually counts. Again, Thinkific, if you want a demo of their online course and membership platform for entrepreneurs, it is the online education platform. It is great for entrepreneurs and creators, and you can grow your business with online courses. Get the Dare to Dream listener special rate. Go to THNK dot cc slash deb and you can find sean stone instagram at the real stone.com we've got just a few minutes here and i would like to ask you sean this is dare to dream what are you next dare to dream what are your future dreams and goals you know we're going to put out a, a, a new documentary that deals with this transhuman stuff on rt um and then i have some projects that are featured feature films, but I don't want to discuss them yet because, you know, we're not in pre-production. We're not, we don't have a timeline yet. Um, but most recently I put out a film called The Fury of the Fist and that's a martial arts comedy. So I think people can enjoy that in the meantime. It's on Amazon Prime, iTunes, all that. Okay. And uh, yeah, I mean, people can check out my work. Very some Park is still available if they want to see the horror stuff. But uh, yeah, I don't want to give away what's coming yet. It's one of, you know, we'll leave it, we'll leave it to the future. In the meantime, they can see what I've already done. Beautiful. And any ritual that you do every day that keeps you grounded and meditation, meditation. meditation. and breath work. Now breath work. I started to incorporate mm -hmm. people should check out uh, the sacred breath Academy. You can find it online, Instagram, sacred breath Academy, start to learn breath work. This is an important tool I use with meditation because it, it activates you more quickly into that, uh, you know, how you say that altered state of consciousness it deepens the awareness of the cellular body and mm. there's a lot of stress. Sacred Breath Work. Yeah, Sacred Breath Academy is the name of the website. 
Great. I'm going to check it out. Love it. There's nothing wrong with breath. It's free. It's easy. And we, we, we have it inside of us. So it's, it's the Beautiful. easiest thing. And no one is, no one is told how to breathe. <laughs> so find out how that's the first, the first tool. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. I was a singer for a long time and I have to say what a profound difference when I learned it wasn't about here, it was down here in the diaphragm. And that made such a world of difference to the rest of my life to, to start breathing from where the breath actually is and where it fills us and calms us. So I will check that out. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing with us. Sean, I really appreciate you being a part of Dare to Dream. My pleasure. Deb. Thank you so much. Yeah, and I end today's show with this quote, and it is from ancient Aramaic. Abracadabra. It's actually from the Aramaic, which is before Hebrew phrase, Avra Kadabra, which means literally, I will create as I speak. Next on Dare to Dream, I'm featuring Kaya Ra, who talks in depth about the Sophia Code, and also Dr. Sue Mortar, who is a master of bio and genetic medicine, and she also has the embodiment of the high frequency energy patterns, and it helps us achieve, all of us, a full hu human potential. You're going to want to tune in to this amazing conversation. Subscribe to my inspirational YouTube videos at youtube.com slash Deb on the radio. And again, get your online platform at thnk.cc slash Deb. Thanks for joining us today on Dare to Dream. And remember, the secret of success is having the courage to begin in the first place. Thanks, Deb. Thank you. That was awesome. Where are you based, by the way? I.